Trick question, what does a router do to a packet if there's no matching route? Okay, just kidding, it's not a trick question, but if there's no matching route, the packet gets dropped. But if the router has a default route, then it will forward packets using that default route. The default route saves the day because it matches all possible destinations. Routers can learn default routes from dynamic routing protocols like OSPF or EIGRP, or you can configure them statically, which is exactly what I'm gonna do here for you today in this packet tracer lab. When you're taking a CCNA exam, you want to be overprepared, you want to be confident, and you want to be ready. It's not a cheap exam. Hands-on lab tutorials like this one and self-paced workbooks and lots of practice are gonna help you get there. Let's jump right in. Alrighty, so here's the scenario. On the left, we have R1. It connects to a core router in the middle, which leads to our internet connection on the right. The requirement is to make sure that R1 is able to reach the 8.8.8.8 IP address that lives out on the internet, as well as any other possible IPv4 address. And to make this happen, we can only use a single static route. And we know that a default route is a type of route that covers all IP addresses, and it can be configured static. What I'll do is I'll click R1 to access the CLI and to view this router's routing table, I'm going to use the command show IP route. The first thing that you're going to notice is that the gateway of last resort is not set. That means there's no default route on this router. And as far as actual routes, there isn't a lot here. Just a connected route for that slash 30 network attached to gig 0 slash 0 and a local slash 32 route for the IP address on this interface. R1 definitely does not have enough reachability information to any other network. If I were to try to ping 8.8.8.8 now, it's going to fail. Let's go ahead and confirm that. Ping. 8.8.8.8 and hit enter. And it fails. We're not surprised, right? I'll go ahead and get this static default route configured. The first thing I need to do is I need to be in global configuration mode. So I'll say config T or config terminal. Then I can issue the command IP route 0.0.0.0 space 0 .0 .0 .0. A route that looks just like this is a default route that matches everything. With static routes, just putting the route is not enough. I need to point it somewhere. I need to tell it where to go. So if I hit question mark, I see that I have a few options. I can specify the forwarding router's address or the next top IP address, or I can specify an egress interface. When dealing with ethernet interfaces and static routes, it's a best practice to point your static route to a next top IP address instead of an egress interface. So what I'll do is I'll specify a next top IP address. But what next top IP address? Well, from router one's perspective or R1's perspective, it's directly connected to the core router in the middle. So I'll use that core's gig 0 slash 0 IP address of 10.0.0.2 as my next hop. So when R1 wants to send traffic to any other network besides its own, it will forward it to a next hop or a next router in lines IP address of 10.0.0.2. I'll go ahead and hit enter and check the routing table again to see if anything's changed. From here, I can do a do show IP route. And there's a new route here. We have a static route that says 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, which again means any possible IPv4 address. Use 10.0.0.2 to get there. We know that that route specifically is a static route because of the S code next to it. We also know it's a default route because of the asterisk. It also tells us that the gateway of last resort is set. That simply means that if R1 doesn't have a more specific matching route for a particular network, instead of dropping the packet, send it as a last ditch effort or a last resort to 10.0.0.2 which is the core, and let that router figure it out. At this point, it looks like R1 does have enough information to reach that 8.8.8.8 IP address. Let's test it. I'll say do ping 8.8.8.8, and I'll hit enter. Perfect, it's successful. R1 was able to reach the IP address on that internet router thanks to the default route, that static default route. I don't need to add any other static routes to reach any other network because that static default route matches everything. And that's really all there is to it. Static default routes or static routes in general are really easy to configure and this was a lot of fun. I really enjoy helping people learn networking, especially from labs like these. If you found this video helpful, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help the channel grow and reach more people. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. That's it for now. Have a great day and keep labbing.